Let's start with an easy proposition. Let A be an invertible matrix. Then A times B equals A times C implies that B equals C. Secondly, B times A equals C times A implies B equals C. The first point is known as the left cancellation law, since we can cancel the A on the left of both sides of the equality. Similarly, the second point is known as the right cancellation law, since we can cancel the A on the right of both sides of the equality. The proof is rather easy. For the first point, we multiply both sides on the left by A inverse. We get A inverse times bracket A times B equals A inverse times bracket A times C. By associativity, we have bracket A inverse times A times B equals bracket A inverse times A times C. Both brackets becomes the identity matrix, so we are left with B equals C. The proof of the second point is very similar, just that we multiply on the right instead, so we will not repeat the proof here. Now, let's look at some properties of matrix inverses. To make sure that the multiplications are defined, we assume that the matrices are square matrices of the same size. The first point is that the identity matrix is invertible, and the inverse is itself. This is easy to check from the definition, since the identity matrix times itself is itself. This is true because any matrix multiplied to the identity matrix is itself. So this is particularly true for identity matrix itself. The second property is that if A is invertible, then A inverse is also invertible, and the inverse of A inverse is A. This again follows from the definition, whereas we usually consider the definition for A and say that the inverse of A is the matrix multiplied to it. But we can also consider the same equation for A inverse and say that the matrix multiplied to it, namely A, is the inverse of A inverse. For the third property, if A and B are invertible, then A times B is also invertible, and the inverse of A times B equals B inverse times A inverse. We can check this using the definition. Bracket A times B times bracket B inverse times A inverse equals A times bracket B times B inverse times A inverse. The bracket becomes the identity matrix, which can then be removed. So we have A times A inverse, which is again the identity matrix. Similarly, bracket B inverse times A inverse times bracket A times B equals B inverse times bracket A inverse times A times B. Again, the bracket becomes the identity matrix, which can then be removed. So we have B inverse times B, which is again the identity matrix. For the fourth property, if A1, A2 up to AK are invertible, then A1 times A2 times all the way to AK is also invertible, and the inverse is AK inverse times AK minus 1 inverse times all the way to A2 inverse times A1 inverse. We can prove this by induction on K. K equals 1 means that A1 inverse equals A1 inverse, which is trivial. The case k equals 2 is proved in property 3. Now we do the inductive case. Assume inductively that the inverse of a1 times a2 up to ak minus 1 equals ak minus 1 inverse times all the way to a2 inverse times a1 inverse. Let's call this star. Then the inverse of a1 times a2 times all the way to ak minus 1 times ak can be thought of as the inverse of the product of two matrices. The first one is a1 times a2 up to ak minus 1, and the second one is ak. So we can use property 3 to write it as ak inverse times the inverse of a1 times a2 up to ak minus 1. Now we can use star to rewrite the inverse on the right as ak minus 1 inverse times all the way to a2 inverse times a1 inverse. So, by removing the bracket, we have AK inverse times AK minus 1 inverse times all the way to A2 inverse times A1 inverse, which completes the induction. The fifth property is that if A is invertible, then A to the power K is also invertible for all positive integers K.
and the inverse of a to the k equals a inverse to the power k. To prove this, we just have to apply property 4 with all the matrices equal to a. The sixth property is that if a is invertible, then lambda times a is also invertible for all non-zero real numbers lambda, and the inverse of lambda times a equals 1 over lambda times a inverse. We can check this from the definition. 4 bracket 1 over lambda times a inverse times bracket lambda times a. We can take out the scalars to the left to get bracket 1 over lambda times lambda times a inverse times a. Since 1 over lambda times lambda equals 1 and a inverse times a equals i, we have 1 times i, which is just i. Similarly, if we consider bracket lambda times a times bracket 1 over lambda times a inverse, we have bracket lambda times 1 over lambda times a times a inverse. So we have 1 times i, which is again i. For the seventh property, if a is invertible, then a transpose is also invertible, and the inverse of a transpose is the transpose of a inverse. Again, we use the definition to check this. We consider a transpose times the transpose of a inverse. Here, we recall a property of matrix transposition, which is that the transpose of a times b equals b transpose times a transpose. So, by considering a as a inverse and b as a, we have the transpose of a inverse times a, which is the transpose of the identity matrix, which is the identity matrix itself since the off-diagonal entries of the identity matrix are all zero, so nothing is changed when we take the transpose. In other words, i is a symmetric matrix. Similarly, if we take the transpose of a inverse times a transpose, we can use the same property by considering b as a inverse, so we get the transpose of a times a inverse, which equals the transpose of the identity matrix, which is just itself. Now, let's conclude by giving some equivalent conditions of invertibility. We consider an n by n matrix A. The following conditions are equivalent. The first one is that A is invertible. The second condition is that the system A times x equals B has a unique solution for any given column vector B. The third condition is that the homogeneous system A times x equals 0 only has the trivial solution x equals 0. The fourth condition is that A can be carried to the identity matrix by elementary row operations. The fifth condition is that there exists an n by n matrix C such that A times C equals the identity matrix. Notice that this fifth condition is half the definition of a matrix being invertible, and in this theorem we can prove that this half condition is enough. For the proof, instead of showing that any two conditions are equivalent, we show that 1 implies 2, 2 implies 3, 3 implies 4, 4 implies 5, and 5 implies 1 again. This forms a cycle so that any two conditions are implied by each other, which saves a lot of effort. We have already shown that the first condition implies the second, because we can use the inverse matrix method to find a unique solution x to be a inverse times b. You can refer to the video for inverse matrix method. To show that the second condition implies the third, we take b equals the zero vector. Then x equals a inverse times the zero vector, which is just the zero vector. So this is the only solution. To show that the third condition implies the fourth, since the system has a unique solution, namely the trivial solution, we can show that the fourth condition holds by following the proof of the matrix inversion algorithm. Again, you can refer to the relevant video. To show that the fourth condition implies the fifth, we consider the system a times xi equals ei for i equals 1 to n, where ei is the ith column of the identity matrix. By assumption, we can carry a to the identity matrix by elementary row operations. The resultant systems are i times xi equals ci, where ci is some column resulting from the row operations. This means that xi equals ci, 
So a times the matrix with columns c1, c2 up to cn equals a times the matrix with columns x1, x2 up to xn. By a property of matrix multiplication, this equals the matrix with columns a times x1, a times x2 up to a times xn. So this equals the matrix with columns e1, e2 up to en, which is just the identity matrix. So the matrix with columns c1, c2 up to cn is the matrix C that we want to find. Lastly, to show that the fifth property implies the first, we just need to show that the other half of the definition of A being invertible, in other words, C times A equals I. What we will do is that we check the third condition holds for C. So we assume that C times X equals zero and show that X equals zero. We have x equals i times x, which equals bracket a times c times x. By doing the latter multiplication first, we have a times bracket c times x, which equals a times 0 by assumption, which is just 0. Now the third condition holds, so from the above arguments, we have the fourth condition and also the fifth condition. So there exists an n by n matrix, say c prime, such that c times c prime equals the identity matrix. Then, a equals a times i, which equals a times bracket c times c prime, and using associativity, this equals bracket a times c times c prime, which equals i times c prime, which is c prime. So we have c times a equals c times c prime, which equals i. Hence, a is invertible with inverse c.